Hi, my name's Nick Harris, and today I'm going to show you how to use an iX Cameras 7 series with the MatchID DOSC software. And so we're going to talk a little bit about the setup of the camera. And so we've got our test sample piece here, which has a speckle pattern placed upon the front. The speckle size is specifically set to the resolution and the field of view that we have, so it matches correctly. We've set our camera up here, we're going to be running it at 1000 frames per second. We're perpendicular to our samples, so it's very, very good for our measurement and analysis today. Then we're using some DC lighting here. We need to provide lots of light in order to ensure we've got a nice sharp image and that's suitably illuminated. So now we're going to take you through the control of the camera in order to get the images you need for the analysis. Okay, so you can see here we've used the control, we've set the camera up to 1000 frames per second and currently I'm running a times 10 shutter and this is so that we can ensure any movement within the image is nice and sharp and we have no motion blur. The first thing I want to do is frame up the image which we've already done here but I want to ensure that we've got a good focus. And the way I'm going to do that is I want to open up my aperture fully. So I'm going to actually increase my exposure time to 100. Which then means that I have to open up my aperture. And now I can use our eye focus tool to actually see where we have focus. And I can now pull this in and out of focus. And I can actually get it so that it's perfectly in focus. We now know we have the correct depth of focus, and I can turn this focus tool off. I'm now going to set my shutter speed back to times 10, and now start to close my aperture. And what we want to do is we want to ensure that the area that we're going to do the DIC analysis on is not overexposed, and so we use the expose function. And if I overexpose it, you can see we highlight it red. And I can then simply wind that aperture back until we no longer see any red particles within our DIC analysis area. We now have the brightness set correctly. So now we have set up the scene. We've got suitably sized speckles. We have a good field of view, perfect focus and perfect level of illumination. So I'm going to set the camera recording now. And we're going to overwrite the buffer. And so now we are recording into that circular memory. And now we're ready for the impact. So we have now dropped that, we've impacted it, I've pressed the trigger button, the buffer is now finishing off, and now we switch back to the review tab. Now we can go to the trigger point within the video, and we do this by the jump button. And obviously we're after the event, so we can now play backwards and play back the video until here. We can then step forward the frames and typically we would try and put five frames before impact point just so that we've got some stationary reference frames to work with. I'm going to say use current as my start to save marker. And you can see that set that uh, minus 506 before the trigger point. I'm then going to play the video forwards and stop there and say use current and now we have around 100, just over 100 frames of video that's of use to us. So now we've set those markers we can now go to the save tab. But before we do I just want to ensure that we're saving it in the right format and so we say here, save to camera. We're actually going to use the XSSD within the camera. And so I'm just inserting that now. Once the camera's identified the XSSD, that drive will become available. Here we are, uh, drive video E. We're going to save images. And we're going to say TIFF RAW files, 8-bit TIFF RAW. We need to ensure that we're saving in a folder with sequential numbered images. And so here I'm going to say test 5. And then we can click in this sample example area down here. 
We only tick the top box. This creates a subfolder that allows us to save the video sequence. None of these other boxes require ticking. This sets us up as a perfect import into the MapDrive-D software. Once we've done that, we're good to hit Save. And so we save that video down to the XSSD. We click Save Operation Completed. And now we are good to remove the XSSD. Now we have the data in our hand, we are good to use the USB reader, import that into the MacGyD software and start our DIC analysis.